In this episode, we take a look at a Splinterlands draft proposal to the DAO that's currently up for a vote that just went through some major changes. If you've heard everyone talking about it lately in the last week and are interested in what those changes are, please stand by. Hey, all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Ron's Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. Bringing you another Splinterlands related video. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss a, um, a draft proposal that has been up for the last several days and it's caused a lot of commotion. Uh, I've kind of pulled back and I didn't do an initial video on it. We did discuss this a little bit on the live stream on Saturday. But the, the whole thing here just kind of feels really weird to me. But let's go ahead and dive in and uh, see what the changes that were released by the team today amount to. Okay, as always, I will leave a link uh, to the Peak D article with all the details in the show notes if you haven't read through it uh, in the last several days. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details, but what it amounts to is um, the team wants to shift cryptomancers paycheck over to be charged against the DAO, okay? And they're presenting the case for this and they're presenting the details, which is where the weird part gets, uh, comes. I, I know that I'm an older generation compared to some of you out there, but uh, sitting around and discussing somebody's paycheck just seems seems really weird and a very touchy subject. It's almost like uh, the way that I was brought up, it, discussing your paycheck is almost kind of like um, uh, discussing uh, religion or politics. It's a very touchy subject, right? So this whole thing feels really weird. But once they decided to, I, I'm assuming that the, that uh, they had Matt and uh, Cryptomancer had a discussion and they were, uh, he was fine with this because this is putting, you know, putting that all out on the board because once they decided to go ahead and ask the DAO for this change and basically funding to keep him working, then um, they made the decision to just air, you know, all his paycheck details. Okay. So I don't want to dig into it because it's been, um, there's, uh, if you look at the comments section and you listen to all the, there's uh, several other YouTubers have had discussions about this. Um, <clears throat> You know, obviously, I think a lot of us who've been playing Splinterlands uh, for quite a while like Cryptomancer. He seems to know what he's doing. He seems to have a lot invested in the company and in his job and therefore a lot in invested into um, making the game, uh, you know, fulfill its promises and come forward and stay stay active, you know, and, and get to where they fulfill uh, what they said they've done. Anyway, he's got a lot at stake. But a lot of people have been pointing out, especially a lot of people that don't necessarily live in the United States, um, are arguing that he's getting paid too much. I'm not here to pose either on either side of that. I can see both sides of the story. I just think the discussion is really weird. So uh, without getting into the details, you can read through those. Uh, what I wanted to do is post a video uh, at this point as far as they made some changes because we've had this discussion as it's been posted for the last several days um, and a lot of people had input and uh, had good ideas, you know. Personally, uh, I did a little bit on the weekend whenever we were discussing this on the live stream that I thought that, I, first of all, I voted for it uh, because I think he's a good, strong developer, um, but I voted for it and I kind of wanted to have it worded a little bit differently uh, in the fact that, um, I guess, boiling down my point is, yes, I understand people who are really heavy into the land game um, if they hear the words that it's going to be the land game is further going to be uh, pushed back, then that might cause some of them to bail out of the game. I understand that. But um, my main point is that if the game itself, if the new player changes and the advertising and everything like that doesn't get into place and work to bring new players and a lot of new players into the game, land's not going to matter. And I, I have a small amount of land. So for me, it's a lot of a lot of money, but it's not compared to what some of the guys on the top end have, right? So I understand how that could work uh, against us as well, and I understand that even putting a proposal out like this looks bad, 
okay? It makes it look like the game is on, the company is on uncertain footing. Um, so I'm not going to dig into that. They had the Dow, the recent downhaul uh, a few days ago, and they addressed that, and it's a little bit clearer. Um, and, you know, to, to Matt's benefit, he's been very clear compared to how some gaming companies are. Um, but let's go ahead and dig into this. Uh, the number one change uh, that they noted says, while the secret of Pretoria land expansion will be Cryptomancer's main priority, he may also be required to fulfill duties not directly related to land as part of his employment by the DAO, such as code reviews for other developers, assistance with monitoring of production systems, team meetings, urgent bug fi fixes, etc. These items, along with his work on land, will be tracked in his timesheets that will be made available for the community to review on a monthly basis this all very much seems pretty weird to me as well okay so uh i understand that anything asked of the the dow will have to have reference to it and proving that the dow is getting their money's worth but uh airing a, a man's um uh paycheck and uh taking exactly what he's doing off of his timesheets, um you know i kind of i kind of feel that if we're going to approve it um, Matt as his boss or whoever is managing, uh, however they got the structure going there, if they are happy with um, his production schedule, then yeah, I mean, he should be able to answer to it on a town hall or something like that. Hey, what are we doing? And he did. He brought up a chart of exactly what he plans to do. And I can cover that in a different video because it's extremely interesting from the land standpoint. But my main point here is this, this is all very weird. Um, Okay, I know there are people out there who are going to argue about it. Yes, he ha he needs to submit a timesheet every week and tell us exactly. Yeah, all very weird. Okay, so number two, as part of this proposal, but before I go back into that, um, that is one of the main points I wanted to see. One of the main points going back to what I said earlier is the fact that he should uh, be helping out the main team to get everything out as far as the user, new user experience, new uh, or standard user experience, and improving to the game to the point where we can get it um, uh, in advertising mode and get new people in. Okay, in the down hall, they also uh, revealed that um, a lot of these changes they've been making, as far as for um, uh, mobile app or changes they've been making to improve the mobile experience in the browser will also help towards looking at a mobile app. So that was very encouraging as well. So number two, as part of the proposal, Splinterlands agrees to create two new promo cards after the currently authorized promo card sales are completed and sell or otherwise distribute them in whatever way the DAO instructs within reason. The details of the two new promo cards and their sale distribution will be determined via a future, a future SPS governance proposal. So basically, this is putting uh, two more cards out um, that will help out the DAO. So no details on those, but they're kicking that into the deal. Uh, we'll give you two, two more cards, and however the DAO wants to vote on it and distribute those, sell them off, burn them off, or you know, burn things for them or sell things for them, whatever, uh, they'll subscribe to that. And thirdly, which you may want to pay attention to this, very interesting and also something we've been talking about, uh, since the DAO will now be directly paying for the development of a key piece of the Splinterlands code base, as part of this proposal, Splinterlands agrees to work with the SPS stakeholder community in good faith to find a mutually agreeable way to ensure that the SPS DAO will have access and rights to the Splinterlands code base and all related assets and IP to ensure that they are in a position to continue to operate the game in the event that the company is no longer able to. This, it, this really hits hard, and this hits hard in a way that uh, a lot of people have been talking about lately, okay? What happens if the company uh, Steam Monsters fails, okay? Uh, what's the reason of having a DAO? If the game fails, what, what's the reason of having the DAO? Well, he answers it right here. So I guess what they're saying is that, um, and this, what they're saying is that if the Steam Monsters company fails, then the DAO could take and hire somebody else to, you know, operate the game, make the game, whatever. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure about the details, but that's what it sounds like to me. Okay. And that's, you know, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if I was coming into the game right now, I would be very trepidatious as far as putting in a bunch of money, right? 
I like the game. I've been with it for years, you know, um, but that this whole piece of information. Now, with that said, he's being very transparent, so you can't hold that against him. And this also sounds very odd, too, because the whole discussion of the Dow, the Dow was supposed to be a separate entity, which it is from the company um, that is uh, developing and putting out the game. Uh, and there should be a clear definition there in the middle. Uh, obviously, a lot of the reasons are for legal purposes, right? Um, I, I don't know all the details, but I do know that there's a legal definition between those two companies uh, for, for legal reasons. Um, but this seems like it's almost bringing them back together uh, somewhat. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the details, what this may bring in the future, but it does seem like it's taking that separation and bringing it back together again. Either way, uh, this, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. Hey, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Give me your take on it. Either way, I'll see you in Splinterlands. Mm -hmm.